Right, morning everyone. It's uh, Saturday the 16th of November, about half ten in the morning, and welcome to the Laddingford Diaries Part 4. A bit of a change this weekend. Uh, when I spoke to you at the end of last week's film, I said I was going to be down Laddingford for a few days and maybe get to Ruxley for a day's piking. Well, uh, I ended up in hospital most of the week. I had a bit of a blockage in my stent, so uh, that's all sorted. So I've decided to do a weekend at Ruxley piking. So I'm going to do the day today till about four o'clock or something like that. Then I'll head off home and then come back tomorrow. Um, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to set up on the Clingers Lake, which I'll show you more in a minute. Spend the day leapfrogging, ra leapfrogging round here, trying different swims, see if we can have a pike out of here. And tomorrow I'll go at the top end of the complex and show you the other three lakes and have a go at fishing round there. So I'm going to um, get myself set up, just got here. And once I'm set up, I'll show you Clingers Lake, tell you a bit about it and hopefully see if we can have some fish to show you today. So uh, have a good day everyone, I'll come back to you shortly. Take care. Watch you everyone. Stick my arm out a bit further. Right, back again. It's now just gone 11.30. Um, I've had my rods out now, I've had them out for about 10 minutes. Got two rods out. Uh, when I was filming the last piece, this is I finished filming, uh, Don come in at the complex, so uh, Nice to see Don, not seen him for a couple of weeks. Um, spent a good 45 minutes, I suppose, half hour, 45 minutes talking to Don. He's a proper old gentleman, Don. Been fishing his place for years, uh, become a good friend. Uh, so he's given me a few tips about piking. He does quite a bit of piking, told me a few plots to try. Uh, got me rods out, and then uh, Jake drove past. So it's nice to see Jake, not seen him for a while. So I'm fishing down by the gate, so uh, short about. <laughs> to uh, bump into a few people in and out today so it's nice to catch up with some of the uh, regulars here and uh, both Jake and uh, Don both say they've been enjoying these diaries so that's good news so it's nice to know that people are uh, appreciating them anyway we're at Ruxley so we've got Ruxley's uh, complex where we've got the Clingers Lake as you come in through the gate then we've got the big lake the shallows and the new barge so today I'm going to stick down on the Clingers which I'm going to show you in a minute and what I'm going to do, I'm going to leapfrog round from swim to swim. So do about half hour, 45 minutes on each swim. Nothing happens, just move round, show you some of the swims, some of the lakes. Right, so this is Clingers. As I say, it's the first lake that you come into when you come into the complex. Now the reason it's called Clingers, there is a factory over there that was called Clingers. So uh, that's why it's called Clingers. Um, I don't know what it is in acres, I'll try and find out. Or edit the film. Now years ago this used to be our match lake, there used to be competitions on here. Up there you can see the, uh, the bridge for the um, M20, A20 M20. So we're just in Sid Cup, that's where Rutsley Lakes is. A bit noisy if you get used to the noise, you don't hear it after a while. Um, and just out to the left here, the main gate. Now as you can see up through the trees there. Um, again, that's, I think, I'm not sure what that is, but like a sick cut bypass, I suppose. Anyway, secure compound, we've got two big lock, two big gates at the front there, and as you go up into the complex, there's another gate halfway up that separates, like, the main lakes. Okay, so Clingers, as I say, used to be a match lake. There's some big pike in here. Oh. Hang on, my saints come up my camera, see if that goes right, that's gone right. Um, there is big pike in here, or, or rumoured to be big pike. Uh, I was talking to Don, he's been fishing for pike since the 1st of October and not doing very well. It uh, seems to be pretty hard. Dave had a few pike out the first week of the pike season. I think three or four the first day. Um, not had much since. Um, there's good carp in here. Um, lots of silverfish. As I say, used to be the match day. I mean, there was talk about us turning this into a day ticket fishery, so I don't know if that's still in the plans. Um, we've got lots of plans going on at the minute up at Ruxley, so that was one of them. Anyway, I'm fishing right over in the corner here. It's really sunny, so it's hard to... with the shadows and everything, I don't know if you can see my two floats out there. I've got a perch on one and a rope, no, a sprat on the other. One fishing on the bottom, one about six inches off. Uh, I was right over by the trees, but the floats are drifting in a bit, so I'm going to do a recast in a minute. And the, the, rope, the, the rod that I'm fishing off the bottom, I'm going to recast that every sort of five, ten minutes, sort of twitch it in a bit, see if I can get some action on that. 
Um, as I say, we're going to have a walk around, different swims, so I'll show you different parts of the lakes. The sun's out, I don't know if you can see the sun up there. It's a gorgeous day, really warm. I, I mean, I've got loads, layers of clothing on, I think I've got about four layers on top, a couple of layers on the bottom, and I'm quite warm now, so um, we've been here about an hour and a half, so what we'll do, get the kettle on. My car's just barked up on the bank here. I mean, I like this sort of fishing. I've got two rods and that, my landing mat and my little bag. I can just jump from swim to swim, walk up to the car, which ain't too far away, make a cup of tea. I've got John with me today, sitting in the car, reading the paper at the minute. Um, we've got some cans of soup for later on and a couple of cheese rolls, hopefully. It'll be a nice day's fishing, and uh, I'll get back to you when we've got some action or with an update a bit later on. See you soon. Watch everybody, uh, back again. It's now just coming up to one o'clock. Um, I've moved up to the top end of Clingers now, in the far corner. Um, I, I tried a couple of swims down on the uh, as you just come in through the gate, but the uh, the sun was like quite bright out there. I think it's probably too sunny where I was fishing, so I've moved up in like the shadows now. So hopefully, got more of a chance of a fish. I'll show you Clingers from this end of the lake. And as you can see, it's going to adjust to the light. Really sunny, you can see the sun shining down there. Let me zoom in. Down the far end of the lake there. There's a little bridge. It's like a culvert that runs through there. That's where the River Cray runs through. What happens, the water for this lake, it comes in at the top of the big lake from the River Cray. Obviously it runs through the, the Cray and there's a sluice just round to the right of me. Water runs through that and it out through the uh, by that uh, bridge down there back into the River Cray. Don't seem a lot of movement at the minute, so I don't know if um, they've got the sluice shut. Uh, water level seems quite low actually, so there's only me on this lake at the minute. There was a fella when I've got here, I was, there was nobody else here. There's only me fishing. Then I see a fella walking around doing a bit of spinning. He tried a few of the swims, but I didn't see him have anything. Anyway, so I've moved up into the corner, just to the right of me, just beyond this bush. They say there's a sluice, um, so I'm going to walk around there and have a go around there in about an hour or so. But I'm going to sit out here for an hour. Um, I think this is probably the best bit for a fish. Let's see if I can zoom into where I'm fishing. I don't know if you can see with the shadows. I've got, yeah, I think that's my float there, just the other side of that bush. That's sort of drifted in a bit. I'm going to pull that back in a minute and recast it to the corner of that overhanging bush here. Then I've got one out there somewhere. Let's see what I'll find. It's hard to see with all the reflections and sun. There's like a big clump of weed out there. So I've got one out there. I've changed my bait, so I've still got a perch on one rod. Let's turn this around, sorry. Uh, I've still got a perch on one rod and I've got a roach on the other rod now, so try that. A uh, bit quiet, not a lot happening. I've seen, spoke to a few people that are walking around. Not as much been happening on the pike front anywhere, so... Um, never know, still got two or three hours fishing, so hopefully we'll be able to get something for you. I've had a cup of coffee. John's been out of the car and had a walk around. I think he's fast to kip now, he's read his paper. So I'm going to give you another half hour and I'll file the, uh, the old cooker up, get our soup on, have a cheese roll for our lunch. And uh, so I'll come back to you shortly, hopefully with a fish or with an update of nothing's happening. Okay, so uh, see you all soon. Watcher, back again. Uh, it's about half three now. Just starting to get a bit overcast now, so I uh, thought I'd do a quick update. Uh, it's been dead, nothing happening. I've moved around a few different swims, come back into the corner again, because I did have a little... Uh, knock on me one of my rods down here in this corner earlier on but um, nothing tried in the margins all along the middle by the reeds uh, I've been round by the sluice which is always a good place but no joy at all um, Rob turned up about uh, I don't know an hour ago for a cup of coffee and a chat so we've been sitting there shooting a breeze so that was nice anyway um, so it's getting a bit overcast so I'm probably going to give you another half hour then start packing away make my way home I'm going to have a nice uh, think chicken stew and dumplings for my dinner tonight, warm up. So I'm going to be back in the morning. Um, 
I've seen a few of the boys up there fishing up the top part, they're carp fishing up there. So they're gonna, I'm going to try and get up earlier in the morning, get up for about 8 o'clock-ish. Um, I'm going to stop off on the way home, grab some herrings, see if that, give them a go tomorrow. I've been fishing with perch and roach all day. Anyway, so yeah, I'll be back here tomorrow, try and get up early. If they have anything tonight, any carp or anything, they're going to try and put, sack them up so we can see them in the morning. Uh, so this are your fish. And I'm going to go up on the top part of the complex, fishing the big lake, the new barge and the shallow, see if we can get a pike out. So that's about it for today. Uh, enjoy your evening, everybody. And I'll be back with you in the morning, unless anything happens in the next half hour or so. So see you later. Take care. All right, morning everyone. It's uh, Sunday morning, back at Ruxley, as I uh, said yesterday. Um, it's about half nine in the morning. I've been up here about 45 minutes, I suppose. I've had a walk around, see a few of the boys. Don't seem like there was any action anywhere last night. Um, apparently a very mild night last night. Um, most of well, I say I've only seen a few of the boys, a lot of them are still in bed. Don't blame them. Um, what I've done, I've set myself up in the car park, swim on the new barge do some piking here today and later on I'll pull my rods in and I'll walk around and I'll like try and film some of the lakes, some of the swims. Um, I'll just show you quickly the new barge. This is a new barge, car park swim, set of Norfolk reeds there. Like islands there. Now, then I'll explain more about I'll explain more about the lake later, I'll just give you a quick view. If we look over there, if I can zoom in. James is fishing over there on the far bank. So there's a few people, I think there's a couple of people fishing the, uh, sorry, turn this around again. There's a couple of people fishing on the new barge, quite a few people on the big lake, there's quite a few here actually. Try and get a bit of light, right, okay. As I say, I've set up in the car park, so I'm just going to stay here all day and then like, pull my rods in and have a wander around. The reason I set up here, if you can see, this is like the car park. Everybody sort of comes in and out of this area. We've got the big lake behind us there. I think that's Stuart vivid up over there. Um, so, fishing this winter today, I get to see a few people, hope to get a few on camera. I've had a word with Jake and Ants. Um, they're quite willing to have a go on the camera, so we see if we can do like a little interview with them. They, I mean, Jake's been fishing this since he was about nine, I think. He uh, knows every fish in here, in this complex, knows all about it. So. Uh, and slightly different. I think he's only been a member a couple of years, but he's done really well on here. So, two different perspectives, two different people. One's been fishing it a long time, one's not been fishing it long. So, hopefully, get a few tips off them. Um, so, I'm going to get my rod set up, get them out, get the kettle on, have a cup of coffee. We've had a nice bowl of porridge before we left this morning. Got John with me again this morning, and he's sitting in the car reading the paper as usual. So, um, I'll come back to you shortly once I've set up, tell you more about the barge, show you more of the barge and then um, hopefully see if we can have a fish today. It was a dire day yesterday, no fish at all. Um, I spoke to a couple of fellas who was leaving just as I was packing up and they had been pike fishing up on the top here. In fact, one person was fished in this swim piking all day, never had nothing. Uh, I don't think anyone had a pike yesterday. So uh, we'll see how it goes anyway, I'm always hopeful. Um, and we'll just try and get a few more people on camera today, make this a bit more interesting if we, if we don't get any fish. So I'll speak to you soon. Have a good day, everybody. Watcha, back again. Now about to sort me out. Right, it's about just coming up to half twelve. Um, not much been happening on the pike in front. Um, well, not so much been happening anyway. I've seen two ducks caught today. That's about it so far. Um, uh, it's just been crazy morning here. Like everyone coming and going. People I haven't seen for a long time. So I've been doing lots of chatting. Sorry, let's just move that down a bit. So that's why I'm not been doing much filming. Anyway. Um, I did hope to get, I spoke to Jake and um, Ant this morning when I was walking around. I was hoping to get them on the video, tell you a bit about like, especially Jake, I say he's been fishing it for donkey's years, he knows every fish in every lake, knows all the spots, he would tell you so much more about the place than me. So um, if you two are watching this, you sneaked off without me getting you on camera, but I will get you, don't worry. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've just, I've had to walk a couple of fellas around this morning, like thinking of joining, so I'm showing them around, just going to net them out. And uh, I forgot how big this place is, I'm knackered walking back here, so I'm going to um, stick the kettle on, have a cup of coffee, 
have a nice corned beef and pickle roll, I think. And then um, I'm gonna, I've got my rods in a minute, so I'm probably going to chuck them out for another hour, an hour or so, bring them back in. Then I'm going to have a quick walk around, just show you some of the lake, show you some of the swims. But uh, not much to report on the fishing front. I did when I let the uh, feathers off. There's a, there was a, let the feathers out. As I walk back, there's, there's there's a bloke fishing over on the clingers over the far bank. When I had a chat with him, he's had one little pike this morning, about seven, eight pounds. Um, so done better than I did yesterday, anyway. So what I do is say I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, uh, have another hour's fishing or so, then I'll hopefully come back, show you some of the lakes, some of the swims, tell you a bit about Ruxy. So see you soon. All right, watch everybody. It's bloody out. All right. Start again, watch everybody back again. It's just gone two o'clock. Um, as I say, I'm gonna have a walk around and show you some of the swims. Right, I'm on the big lake now, so I'll just show you out into the big lake. Here we have the big lake. <coughs> this is like goes round to the right here. Again, I should have found out, I don't know how many acres it is. Um, not a big head of carp in here, but the fish in here are stunning. Biggest fish, 42 pound, a big girl, I think goes about 42. A few 30s, loads of 20s, proper proper old fish. So as you can see, it comes along here and then it goes round, see right on point, round to the left there, which I'll walk round there and show you that in a minute. Um, a lot of weed still about, a lot of floating weed, you can see. Can't just zoom in. Yeah, you can't really see it. Getting a bit overcast. So yeah, this gets quite weedy in the summer, but still fishable, you know, the, the boys, the regulars up here, they fish it in, in the weed and stuff, they have plenty of fish out still. Um, Ruxy, most of the lakes on here, none of them are easy, you know, it's one of them waters where you have to sort of put the time in, get used to the waters, find the spots, etc. Anyway, what I'm going to do, it's getting a bit overcast, so I'm going to sort of have a quick wander around the complex. I'm going to just move around, I'll actually walk around here. This is a point swim, so it's right on the point of the big lake. So you've got like the right hand arm and the left hand arm. As we come around, I don't know if you can see all the weed out there. This is the left point swim, young fella fishing in here, new member. You can see all the weed out there. This is like floating weed, it's not attached to the bottom, it just floats about. I think it comes in up through the top of the old barge through the cray. Still quite a lot of weed about for this time of year actually, it's normally died off by now. So I'm going to walk a bit further up the um, big lake and show you from the top end. Right, I'm just walking up the walkway between the new barge which is on the left hand side and the big lake on the right hand side. I'll just show you through here, this is a Royal Box Swim. We've got a stags over there. That's obviously a good place to fish too, the snags. The last swim up here on the left is the snag swim. Then over here, we've got one of the little cutout swims on the bit, on the new barge. I'll just walk down here and show you this. <coughs> right, this swim's called the slug pit. And we're back on a new barge. That's where I'm, just the other side of these root Norfolk reed beds, is where I'm fishing over in the car park swim on the barge. Uh, over there we've got the well they're not really islands, they're just trees that are growing, but like, you know, the fish are in there all the time. If you're fishing close to them, which are good spots to fish, they do try and take you in underneath there, so uh, you do have to be a bit sitting on your rods, fishing locked up. But again, around here the margin fishing is really good. Whenever I fish this side of the new barge carp, you went was fishing this side, always used to fish the margins at night, especially this swim and there's another swim next to it, Mincers, which is a good margin spot. So I'm going to walk back over to the new, uh, the big lake and show you from the snag swim. Okay, so we're up here in the snags, very popular swim, loads of fish come out from up here, fishing out to the far snags over there. And just to the left of us we've got the cut which I'll show you in a minute. Again loads of weeds still about, it's normally died off this time of year but I don't we've had many frost yet, that normally gets it going. As you can see loads of bird life up here, I mean the birds are a problem. I was just speaking to Stuart, I think he's had three pickups from ducks today. Loads of diving birds here. Don't seem to matter what colour bait you use and stuff so um, I'm going to walk around and show you a bit more. Right, we're back on the new, sorry, right, we're back on the new barge again. 
in uh, Ormsby Swim, which is named after Ant, because he fished this a lot last summer. Fishing over to them reed beds there, I think. It's taken a while to sort itself out. So the light's dropping now. So this is a new barge, as I say. There's like a gravel bar sort of halfway out there. There's those little spots and things. You need to like get a mark rod out, find the umps, the bumps, the holes. Um, there's still a bit of floating weed about on the barge over there by the Treaty Islands and what have you. But most of it's gone now. So there's quite a bit in the margins here. So we're walking up between, on the left is the uh, new barge. And over on the right, if I can just get into it, it's still swim out. Is a cut. Okay, so what happens? You've got the old barge at the end of this cut where the River Cray runs into, and it obviously runs through here, joins up onto the big lake. Um, good stalking along here. If you look over them far banks, it's, the banks are under cut about 18 inches, two foot. If you can get a bait right out over there, loads of fish get picked up there. Um, I say a lot of people have fish stalking along here. Okay, so we're going to walk up a bit. We're still between the cut and the new barge. And we're going to have a look from the swan's nest swim on the new barge. So like this is the top, of the top part of the barge. Got the double swim over there. Good social swim, get a couple of in there. Again, the Norfolk reed beds over there on the left. Just behind those trees over there, we've got the stock pond. Uh, another good swim. Plenty of fish come out there. You can fish up over to the, the overhanging trees and stuff up there. Um, and you see quite a lot of fish swimming up and down through this bit. It's a good place for spotting fish for some reason. I always manage to spot fish here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to walk up to the top and start showing you the shallows. Right, we're walking up through the walkway between... We've got the old barge on the right and the new barge on the left and in front of us we're just coming up to the shadows oh, I'm getting out of breath right this is called the bonfire swim and a quick look from here okay so we're on the shallows uh, literally it's like two foot deep this lake very silty still a few pads out in front of us they've not died down yet Norfolk reed beds over there uh, this is quite a productive swim. Loads of places to fish too. Let's go out a bit further. This is like a long thin lake, you know. Uh, in the summer it's just full of uh, lily pads, so you've got to learn how to fish between the pads. But a good productive lake. We've got oh, a bit of a bonfire going over there. I think English Nature, they're doing a bit of clearing up work over there. So they're obviously burning some stuff. So we're going to walk round. Actually, if I just walk over here, so now we're walking between the shallows, which is on the right, and the new barge, which is on the left. Uh, that's going to take you a while to find your way around here, you know, after a couple of walks around, you soon get used to where everything is. So we're at the top part of the new barge now in a double swim. So this is a new barge. Where the light's going, the camera's trying to keep up right. Again, Norfolk, all the Norfolk reeds over there on the right. Right down at the far end of the barge. And the left hand bank over there. There's quite a few swims along that bank. It's good, uh, good fishing. I mean, if I was just joining here, this is the one that I'd be concentrating on. I'd come on the new barge. It's a bit easier than a big lake. Uh, some good fish in here, there's 30s in here, really, really stunning fish, you know, all the, in all the lakes the fish are stunning. Um, it's just a little bit easier, um, and I would definitely, where I'm fishing today, the car park swim, I'd try and do a few sessions in there because you sort of get to speak to everybody, everybody who comes past there stops and talks, so you can pick up so much information, advice, meet the people. So this is the top end of the new barge. Over there, behind us is a shallow, so we're going to walk along and have a look at a bit of the shallows. Right, so we're up on the shallows now, in the canyon swim. Quite clear up here, not many pads at all. Uh, some good spots to fish to over the far bank now. 
Again, keep fishing in the margins, you know, there's, there's loads of fish come out in the margins. So we're going to walk along. So we've got shallows on the right and over to the left we've got like the new barge. The new barge is basically in the middle so you're sort of walking around that. Now we're in the channel swim. As you can see lots of uh, reed beds here. And there's a little channel that goes just through there. It's a good spot over there under the overhanging tree there. As I say, very, it is very shallow here. It's a really good stalking water this. I mean I see Jake up here all the time going around with just a loaf of bread and a stalking rod. There's loads of fish off the top up here so uh, it's always worth a go. We're going to walk a bit further down. And you see things are a bit overgrown at the minute. We have got some uh, work parties lined up to try and get things cleared up a bit. And we come down into the car park swim of the uh, Shallows Lake. Quite a popular swim. Just loads of places to fish to, you know. So this is the shallows. It does go a bit further along to the left. I will walk down a bit further actually. And over here we've got the main car park. The container there, that the white ones is the cafe. I was running the cafe at the beginning of the year. It used to be open the weekends. But obviously I'm down at Laddingford now, so we haven't actually got anyone running that at the minute. So if anyone wants to volunteer to open it up for the weekends. So we're walking down. This is one of the trees that come down in the storms the other week, as you can see it. We obviously need to sort this out at one of the work parties. So we walk down a bit further. And we're like coming towards the bottom end of the shallows now. Can't remember what this swim's called. Again, loads of places to fish out to in front of you. And this is the shallowest part of the water. It's probably only 12 inches, 18 inches deep the bottom end of this lake, but still loads of fish come out of it. There's a swim down at the, as you first come through the, the gate up there, Heron's Bay, always a good swim. So we're going to walk over. And you can see in front of us, we've got the big lake. So I'm going to walk around there and show you the big lake from this end. Right, we're right back on the big lake. Up the, uh, this is a boys swim. You can see far way over there, the uh, motorway bridge with a sluice. Just to the right is a boat house swim. There's three swims over there, so that's a really good social swim. As we come round, just over in that corner is the gate swim. Um, and you can see how it opens up. There's a few good swims along here. Um, I'm just going to walk back down here. So we're back on the roadway now. So we've got the new barge on the left and the big lake on the right. So we're back in the new barge just over here. And that's where I'm fishing up there, up in the car park swim. So I'm going to walk back to my swim and talk to you from there. Butcher, right, back again in my swim, the car park swim on the new barge. Um, I know it's a bit of a rush, a, quick, a bit of a quick walk round, but we're losing light. It's getting really overcast here now, getting a bit damp as well. So um, I just wanted to show you around some of the lake. I mean, what I will do, I'll organise a day when I know Jake and some of the regulars are up here and do a proper day showing you some of the swims, talking to some of the regulars, so, so you can find out more about the water. Um, I mean, when I come in here this morning, I decided to fish in this swim because I know I'd, I'd sort of meet up with people in here. The trouble is, I just don't stop chatting all day, which I don't. I really enjoy anyway. It's lovely to talk to people up here. Lots of people I ain't seen for a while. Um, so if you was going to think about joining, you know, or you can start fishing here, I'd definitely start on the new barge, and I'll try and do a few sessions in this swim, as I said, because everybody stops and talks to you here. You'll find out so much information. I mean, when I first started fishing here, I've done about four or five sessions in here and I learned so much about the lake from people and um, really got me underway. So uh, 
it's a, it's a, if, if you're not a social person, you don't like talking to them, whatever you do, don't come in here. But if you're sociable, it's a really good swim. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to stick my rods out for another hour, come back to you shortly if we have any action or an update before I go home. Uh, still dead at the minute. I've had a walk around, spoke to a few people, nothing much happening anywhere. So it's not just me, which is a good thing. So I uh, think time to get some soup on, get warmed up a bit, and I'll be back with you shortly. See you soon. Watcher, right, back again. Uh, now I've just gone half past three. Uh, not many people left on here now. Most people go, make their way home. Um, still no fish, I'm afraid. Nothing happening on the pike in front at all. Um, don't know what's happening with the piking up here. It used to be really good, but it's been quite hard again this beginning of this boy. It's been hard at the beginning of this year. Everyone's saying it's hard. But when I was walking around doing a bit of filming, speaking to a few people that were piking, and they're all saying, you know, they're struggling a bit with it. So. Anyway, I'm going to give you another half hour or so. I've just recast my rods out into the uh, margins. Um, so this is like really a recap, really, unless I have a bit of action. So it's been a bit of a boring film, I suppose. No fish action, but hopefully you've seen some of the lake. I know it was a bit rushed because I was a bit worried about the light going, but I'm going to... Um, I will do a proper day up here and do like proper filming and definitely get Jake and people like that on there tell you more about Ruxley. Right, next week, um, my plans are is to do like maybe one, two nights down at Laddingford during the week, probably Thursday, Friday night, I don't know. Then go uh, Saturday or Sunday, do a day's piking again somewhere. So it all depends on the weather. Everyone keeps telling me it's going to snow. Um, I don't mind the snow actually, as long as it ain't too bad. Uh, I can keep warm, I just get in bed if I get cold. I've got all the warm clothing and everything. So hopefully all being well. I should be out and about next week with Laddingford Diaries Part 5. Thanks for watching so far, I hope you're still enjoying them. Um, I've had some really good feedback off the people up here today, everyone seems to be enjoying them, so obviously doing something right. Um, just got to try and get a bit more fish action, so hopefully, as I say, be down Laddingford next week, so uh, you know, I should have a few fish to show you down there. So if I don't come back to you tonight, I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. See you soon.